Imagine walking into a pharmacy in the 1920s. Among the tonics promising to cure everything from fatigue to arthritis, one stands out. Radithor, a tiny bottle with a big promise. Perpetual energy in liquid form. Its secret ingredient, radium. Yes, that radium, radioactive, glowing in the dark, bone destroying radium. And people were drinking it, willingly, eagerly. And not just any people, wealthy elites, socialites, athletes, even scientists. They believed it was the next evolution in health. But this isn't just a cautionary tale about bad science. It's about how culture, charisma, capitalism, and confusion collided to create one of history's strangest health fads, and one of its most haunting tragedies. The story begins in 1898, when Marie and Pierre Curie discovered radium. It glowed, it burned, it decayed. It was mysterious and powerful, a scientific marvel. Radium was the new wonder element. It was rare, difficult to produce, and mesmerizingly beautiful. The Curies noted its strange effects, but they didn't fully grasp its long-term danger. Soon, the medical world got excited. In small doses, radium was believed to stimulate cell regeneration. It was used to treat tumors, acne, impotence, and even aging. It didn't take long for entrepreneurs to smell profit. Enter William J. A. Bailey, a Harvard dropout with a flair for pseudoscience and profit. He created Radithor, a radioactive elixir made from distilled water and two radioactive isotopes, radium-226 and radium-228, and he sold it as liquid sunshine. Radithor promised to revitalize tired blood, boost libido, and extend life. It was marketed as scientific, cutting edge, and elite. People loved it. It came in sleek glass bottles, had a sharp metallic taste, and glowed slightly in the dark. Bailey called it a cure-all. He wasn't a licensed doctor, but nobody cared, because Radithor was the elixir of the future. One of Radithor's most famous fans was Eben Byers, a wealthy Pittsburgh industrialist, amateur golf champion, and all-around symbol of 1920s masculinity. After injuring his arm in 1927, his doctor prescribed Radithor. Byers started drinking three bottles a day. He credited Radithor with restoring his vitality, strength, and sexual energy. He praised it to friends. He gave it as gifts. He drank over 1,400 bottles. But in 1930, things began to change. His teeth started falling out. His jaw developed holes. He had headaches and pain he couldn't explain. His body was deteriorating from the inside out. By 1932, Byers's jaw had completely disintegrated. The government got involved. They sent officials to interview him, but he was too disfigured to be seen in public. His official cause of death, radium poisoning. His remains were so radioactive, he had to be buried in a lead-lined coffin. Byers wasn't alone. Across the US, a parallel tragedy was unfolding in radium dial factories. Women, known as the radium girls, painted watch dials with glow-in-the-dark radium paint. They were taught to lick their brushes to keep the tips fine. Lip, dip, paint. They joked about the glow, painting their teeth and nails for fun. They had no idea they were slowly killing themselves. Soon their teeth fell out. Their jaws broke. Their bones weakened. Some developed cancer. When they died, their graves registered on Geiger counters. The company denied responsibility, blaming syphilis, bad hygiene, anything but radium. But five women, sick and dying, took the company to court. They won and their case changed labor law forever. By the mid-1930s, science had caught up to radium's effects. Researchers found that the radioactive particles didn't pass harmlessly through the body. They lodged in the bones, where they bombarded cells for years. The result? Cancer, necrosis, death. Radium stopped being a miracle. It became a cautionary tale. Radithor was pulled from shelves. Bailey moved on to selling radioactive stimulators and even fake testicle implants. He died wealthy and unrepentant, but the damage was done. Dozens, maybe hundreds of people died from their belief in the atomic cure. So why did people drink radium and love it? The answer lies in a perfect storm of scientific ignorance, marketing hype, status culture, placebo effect, and blind trust in progress. Radiation was new and misunderstood. Companies used the prestige of science without evidence. Radium was expensive and exclusive. Drinking it signaled wealth and sophistication. Many did feel a short-term boost, possibly due to adrenaline or other reactions. And the 1920s were a time of rapid innovation. People believed technology could solve anything. It was the atomic age before the atom bomb, when radioactivity still meant hope, not horror. Today, we look back in disbelief. How could anyone drink something radioactive? But history is filled with examples of dangerous fads, from mercury medicine to cigarettes prescribed by doctors. 
What makes the radium craze stand out is how brightly it glowed and how quickly it killed. Radium promised eternal youth. What it delivered was a grim reminder. Just because something is new, shiny, and backed by science doesn't mean it's safe. So the next time you see a wellness product with miraculous claims, think of Radithor and maybe skip the glowing stuff. If you found this helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more amazing content.